Any of the views expressed in this show do not represent the views or opinions of those participating. We are merely observers. Please do not reenact any of the stories you hear on our show. Being featured on our show is not something to be proud of. And as always, please drink responsibly. That's the whole thing. It's like, if you do it correctly, like, you're brushing your teeth, you're taking a dump, you spit in the toilet, <laughs> and then you just get up and don't even wipe. Just take a shower. <laughs> just clean yourself out. all off. It's just, one shot. Just, well, just you got a hand new. free, so you might as well apply shaving cream first, yeah. and then brush, and then shave. On that I, don't side, have, and then I don't have that kind of hand coordination. I'd come out looking like... <laughs> yeah, no, you forget, so you got the razor. Yeah, in your mouth. Oh, no, no, no. I got a horrible feeling in my mouth. Now. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Laughs and Drafts. My name is Jason, your resident fancy boy. I'm Jared, your learning man. This is Tim, the old man. I'm Ethan, the guy with the glasses. Oh, it's switched again. He does this just to upset me, and it works every time. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ethan. God, I hate you. For those of you who have never listened to the episode, I didn't know it upset you, but now I do. <laughs> now, I, now you do. Uh, for those of you who never listened to the show before, we go over some weird news stories, go over some weird beers, and then we all ride that train straight down to hell while we figure out some more about beers and ourselves and what we put in our mouths. God, that old granddad in my mouth burns. Yes, we are recording a double tonight. Uh, so we are still drinking the same old granddad uh, bourbon whiskey, which is a hundred proof, and we've been doing Man, shots. He did of, not want to go in that blender. Uh, but he no, did eventually. He, did and well, he tastes pretty good. Good thing that osteoporosis kicks in. He can't fight back very hard. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, this the whole bottle's almost gone between the four of us, and it's oh. it's great. I've been chewing on my lips because I do that weird thing where I just I chew on my lips a lot because I like the taste of blood and iron. So I'm doing that, and now when every time I take a shot, it feels like my lips are just like on fire. It is, but it's still delicious. So we're gonna go ahead and get to our first story. This one is from IrishPost.co.uk. Uh, the headline reads: Irish villagers complain Viagra plant fumes have men and dogs walking around with hard ons. Mm. <laughs> Residents of where's this uh, plant located? Plant it, fumes. It's, it's, it's in uh, an Irish village oh, where Viagra is being manufactured, and, and com- they have complained that the fumes from a nearby factory have been giving them a hard time. Oh, yeah, the yeah, erection, yeah. yes. <laughs> and they're complaining why? I don't know. I mean, I guess the same reason the 19.8 Esquipel was complaining. <laughs> Everybody's blacking out. Uh, <laughs> So, pharmaceutical firm <laughs> Pfizer have produced an erectile dysfunction drug in Ringaskitty County for the past, for the last two decades. Villagers claim that Ringaskitty, proximity to the plant and its love fumes, have been giving local men and even their canine friends enormous sexual powers. Barmaid Debbie O'Grady told the Sunday Times, "One whiff and you're stiff." <laughs> That's my tagline. That's, that's a right nice slogan. Sure one well, with your found the name for the episode. <laughs> yeah, one with your stiff. Yeah. That's a good. That's one. a good slogan. All right, already right off the bat, yeah. Ethan. If you weren't such a jerk, so help me, I hate you. We've been getting the love fumes for over for years now for free. Miss O'Grady's mother, Sadie, said that living in Ringaskitty is a blessing for men who suffer with problems in that department. Adding that there is something in the air, the wind. The widow added, no, that's sad. <laughs> Everybody's got erections down here, but I don't have a husband. I'm a flirtatious wow, woman. Wow, that is a huge downer. <laughs> yeah, I know. A lot of us are. You just have to have that spark. That's all. why I'm giving them a country accent. I don't know why. Mm. They're from Ireland. Uh, there's a lovely man waiting down the road for me. Pfizer said in the statement that the stiff whiff was nothing more than amusing myth, but there were no hard feelings. Our manufacturing process have always been highly sophisticated as well as highly regulated, they said. Nevertheless, residents remain scared stiff. Oh, my God. I was hoping you'd whip out your uh, ding, ding, ding. Irish accent. I don't do Irish he accent. He said yes, whip you out. Do. Everyone does an Irish I accent. I honestly, that is the one. No, come on. I, I say that is the one. I, I can't do any of them well. I can only say rise oblides and down by the river. And you're crippled. Yeah. That's the only things that I can say. Put another shrimp accent. on the bobby? I can't even do that one correctly. Put another bone and on the bobby? And then you like my German one, which is literally like the biggest slap to the face of all Germans because I'm like the caterpillar from A Bug's Life. Oh, I'm a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> and you guys love it, and I don't know why. Anyways, 
Nevertheless, the re- the residents remain scared stiff that something more sinister is going on. Like, they're just taking boners and throwing them into the fire and waiting for the fumes <laughs> to get everybody. Fights psychiatric nur- nurse Fiona Toomey, which I would not trust someone to take care of me, psychiatric nurse named Toomey, who recently <laughs> returned to the village after five years in America, said that local dogs walk around in a state of sexual excitement. I think that Viagra must have gotten into the water supply, she said. No. I'm convinced that... Look no further, Grandma. <laughs> what, I, yes. what I don't understand is like... I don't know. Mm. This is just like... It's such not a problem. It's not like... Mm. I don't know. Well, it it gets to the point to where it's like, it's turned black. It looks frostbitten. <laughs> I've had a wretch in too long. Well, I, it's still not how it works. I don't think Viagra is a guaranteed erection. It just helps you. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else to follow up. Gosh, no. you stared into my soul. I know, right? I felt it burn into you, and it was wonderful. Jeez. And I'm not going to divulge any kind of information on that one. Yeah, you were biting. Uh, I will. I will tell you, you keep that to yourself, that old man. I, I will tell you that before Jared's uh, world is shattered from his dad's statements. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> Always. Have you ever heard of the what they got to do whenever you get like erection lasting for more than four hours? You got to take a syringe and. Oh, Take no, the blood out. No. That's exactly you what go they on do. parade. <laughs> you don't go on parade. That's definitely not the. What kind of parades are you going to? <laughs> Tim's just. He's been confused his entire life. He's just been terribly abused, and they're like, "You're going to the parade, Tim." The parade and he's like, None. kind of parade. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's just a. That was just a story. As they're beating him with a sock full of oranges, I, I can't for the life of me understand why would you ever. It's like that, that stuff that I would get when, you know... You don't want to be pushing to... rope. <laughs> what? Push, you never heard you of never that? Heard that it's above, it's above rope. your head. Pushing rope. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I was... You gotta be there. I was, well, no, I was... I was <laughs> <laughs> the story was the, to be there, right? the story I was going to say was, was the one where the guy stuck weed whacker wire up his urethra all oh, the way up into his bladder oh, till it got. Uh, so he uh, said uh, pushing rope, and I'm thinking pushing weed whacker wire, no. and that's one thing in my head. No. Um, mm. But yeah, it's, it's just like it's, it's just another one of those stories where it's like, why would you do that? Why would you look at your genitals and be like, that's not hard. Uh, it should be, I don't know, get some kerosene, put it in a syringe, and we're just going to inject it into my penis and see if that clears things up. Well, when was this? Like back before Viagra, so what, like 1970s, 60s? I actually don't know when they made Viagra, but I'm guessing it was in the. Do some research, Jerry. <laughs> what do you do here besides edit everything and do all the research <laughs> on everything? I do nothing, Jason. You lazy slob. <laughs> <laughs> all right, take us to the next story. I'm going to pour myself another shot. <laughs> Immigrants found super glued into the back of a lorry, survived by eating cargo of Belgian chocolate. <laughs> Burns. I thought that was going to be a uh, much worse. <clears throat> when you said cargo, I was thinking something like human skin. <laughs> and then you said Belgian chocolate, and it turned out to be delightful. <laughs> well, be a pleasant it, immigrants situation. that have been super glued in the back of a truck treated like royalty. <laughs> I don't even get Belgian chocolate. <laughs> When I'm not super glued to the back yeah, of a truck. Yeah, when I'm not super glued to the back of a truck. And here they are getting it for free. Eleven immigrants who were super glued mm. to the back of a lorry survived eating the expensive Belgian chocolate it was transporting. It has been claimed. Ten Iraqis, including three children under the age of 15 and one Afghan national, were discovered when the lorry pulled into a lay-by and people in a nearby cafe heard shouting. Police arrived, but were forced None to call the fire service. I see you laughing. None of you say a word. <laughs> Continue. I'm not sure. Oh, <laughs> he's oh, laughing. Oh, I know. Just none of I you know. say a word. Continue. Hold on. Let's get it. Let's hold on. Let's. Ethan seems super pleased with himself. Like he, was <laughs> he had something juicy to say. <laughs> yeah, I just know it. <laughs> Continue the story. Police arrived, but were forced to call the fire service for help to open the lorry from Europe because the locks had been glued shut, onlookers said. The cafe owner at the lay-by on the A303 near Warminster Wilts said the migrants had been eating very expensive Belgian chocolate. Is in England? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Mm. Lorry. Yes, that's exactly Okay, yeah, that's right. You're you a did, world you traveler. Lorry, didn't you? Yes, uh, you're a world traveler. What is a lorry? Yeah, what is a it's lorry? It's a semi. It's a semi truck. Oh, it is. Um, so, mm. wait. It said they were super glued to a truck. Why were they super glued? They weren't super glued to the truck. They super glued the lock. 
Is that what it's saying? Because I was personally, I was thinking they were just shirtless That's with their backs yeah. super glued to the truck. They were super glued to one. That's of exactly what I'm, I was thinking too. Apparently, so the lock was super glued. Super glued that? in a super. truck. Clip. Yeah, oh, super glued okay. in a truck. They were locked in a truck with super glue, not super glued <laughs> to a truck. <laughs> That's how it did sound. <laughs> I did. That's how they. Yeah. That's how they wrote That's it. That's why I started reading. You know? I was about to say this is like saw, but you also get candy, so. <laughs> They were medically assessed and were held on suspicion of illegally entering the UK, police said. Dave Thomas, owner of the Willoughby Hedge Laugh no, Lay By Cafe, said, I was in the cafe on site with three drivers when someone came in and said that there was large banging on the side of one of the lorries. A couple of the drivers come in every Saturday just after lunch, coming back from the continent. And so once we were told of the banging, they went straight away to the back of the lorry to try and open the doors Excuse but to no you? avail. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> we were told of the banging. What kind of banging is going oh. on here? <laughs> Ethan's tickle button was just slammed. Oh, <laughs> my <happened>? God. <laughs> I want to know where that is. <laughs> Di- Diana said that. She used it in conversation. She was like, I can't remember what it was, but she was like, that's funny. It's like something hit your tickle button. And I was like, tickle button? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so now it's my word calendar for the... Uh, I like to be using tickle like button it. at least once a day. Mm. We, we all knew straight away what the banging and shouting was. <laughs> it was... You didn't find it funny that time. It was a one-time thing. <laughs> it has happened Look at this here... Look mature man. <laughs> It has happened here twice before in the past 15 years, I believe. Well, banging and shouting? Yes, banging okay, and shouting. Yeah, they don't time. get busy that in, in the UK. It's once every 15 years. Uh, that's just sad. It's like the cicadas come out, and then everyone in the UK uh, just goes nuts. Yeah. The what? Cicadas. Cicadas? Cicadas? Cicada. What is cicada? Cicada. No. Tomato, potato, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I call, I've always called them cicadas. Oh. Well, you're wrong. They're not crazy. <laughs> well, I'll be shirtless waiting for you in the hallway to fight. So after the show, so. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> Police were soon there, as were the fire brigade. But then they had to wait for a fire special brigade. disc cutter to get the padlocks off. <clears throat> it seems that there was one who could speak English, and the police learned of the total numbers on board and organized three ambulances who soon arrived. They seem to have been very lucky as this trailer was a refrigerated unit, but the section that they and the chocolate was in was at normal temperature. Yeah, because no one can eat frozen chocolate unless no. you're like... I think that's one of those things. Like, I recently oh. found out uh, a friend of mine's wife uh, microwaves Cheerios. Mm-hmm. Doesn't put... Doesn't... doesn't Cheerio. Cheerios. 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 This Why Cheerios? This is going to be another thing we're fighting about. I'll be getting pantsless as well. <laughs> Oh, hold it back, the back it up. <laughs> beep, uh, beep, so beep. it microwaves Cheerios, Why? but do- doesn't put like milk in there. Just takes Cheerios, <laughs> puts them in a bowl, microwaves them, and eats them. Wait a minute, and they're already so, toasted already. What's what's the deal? I, with I that? don't know. They just like warm Cheerios. So I'm sitting there playing Destiny with my friend, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that's one of the because they have the you know the the three things that make you a uh, a psychopath or a killer. Mm. There's that those three traits, mm. and that. I think is a fourth one that encompasses the first three entirely. If you microwave Cheerios and eat them, you are a freaking serial killer just waiting to snap. <laughs> I fed Jared those when he was little. Degenerates. <laughs> Why? Hot Cheerios, I'm so good. Though. Yes. Hot Cheerios? <laughs> that explains a lot. But also cold chocolate. Anybody who's like trying to eat like a brick of cold chocolate, mm-hmm. you'll also... Do you really, Jared? Oh, yes. Do you ever take Reese's and put them in the freezer? No, because peanut butter is the devil. All right, Tim, go ahead and give us the next story. I'm tired of hearing about chocolate and trucks. A man who injured his scrotum at work and stapled it back together. Oh, okay, so he okay. injured it at work and stapled it back together. Quick thinking. Yes. Yeah, I mean, both ties will also do bolt, the job. No, bolt, they will not. Yeah, yeah that's more will. painful. I mean, well, no, yes, staples are pretty painful. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried to force a zip tie through your scrotum? <laughs> Uh, no, but more. I ripped my pants one time. You know, and I used a zip tie to fix well, he knows about them. I can't thing. imagine well, it's, it's any thing. different. Let's hold on here. He knows about scrotums pretty much. He had an injury, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A, a previous injury. But <laughs> anyway, uh, and this is an old story. In 1991, Dr. William A. Morton wrote about one of the more bizarre cases in the Journal of Medical Aspects of Human Sexuality. Wait, okay, wait. 
I thought this dude just injured his scrotum and stapled it back together. Why are we talking about studying human sexuality? Well, it's just it's in record in the journal. Oh, it's recorded. Okay. <laughs> yo, yo, this I is. I was like, how did we get here? <laughs> this is a prominence. You know, I mean, this is an important oh, okay. story that has to yeah, be recorded. Uh, while working in the emergency room, a nurse called Morton in <laughs> uh, to see a patient that needed a um, doctor who takes care of men's problems. After she left, Morton what is up said, with "People just being like a doctor who fixed people's torn scrotums. Why can't we just say that? Instead, it's always got to be like." The issues of men. It's like, yes, our penises get slammed a lot in weird well, ways. And you got to give it up. dignity, though. I mean, after no, nope, there's no dignity in there. <laughs> they're, they're trying to build dignity. <laughs> trying to build dignity. <laughs> caverns. Yeah. <laughs> well, you I, know, I hit my penis. It hurt real bad. Doctor, help it shut, will you? Yeah, it shut. I already did it. Half yeah. the work. Well, help me out. Finish this job on me. Well. uh... <laughs> State job. He asked that's this Doctor Morton said to ask he asked the patient to remove his trousers and uh, two or three yards of foul smelling strained gauze wrapped around his scrotum, which was swollen to the size of a grapefruit and extremely tender. You know, this sounds like a goose on a grill. <laughs> my squeevil. It's, this dude is going to haunt us for life. It's going to be on a shirt. I'm going to have to get on the Skype call. You know, I guy. keep looking at his face. He's, just, he's in it's, agony. He's screaming. You know, you can just look at this face. I mean, it's just, uh, it's horrifying. I don't think that's him. Stock I think that's photo, a stock I photo of a dude screaming. Well, it could be, but I, I, I would feel, feel weird I if, they were, if, if they were like, I believe. wow, you're in extreme medical need. Can you, yeah. can you mind if I take a picture of your face real quick with a white backdrop? <laughs> <laughs> it'll only take a minute. Yeah, it'll only take a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Just grab me. <laughs> yeah, just walk. Grab me that light over there. Yeah, grab me that light. We'll shine yeah. your well, face up real good. the doctor's astonishment, the patient had jagged zigzag laceration oh, that God. oozed You're going to say pubic hair. Pus. Yeah. Let me emphasize that. Pus. He saw <laughs> he saw some dark objects embedded in, in the area and asked what they were. The patient told Morton that several days earlier he had injured himself oh in the machine shop. Now, wait point. a minute. It was a couple days earlier. He's coming in now to take care of this. Uh, where he worked, and he had uh, cleaned the laceration himself with a heavy-duty stapling gun. Wait a minute. This was is like what you clean with. Oh, I'm was sorry. It like I'm, I'm sorry. Well, this staple gun was also air powered, <laughs> and it was very sterile. No, I, I may rephrase that. Uh, he had closed the laceration himself with a oh. heavy duty stapling gun. My my eyes are failing me. Uh, the dark objects were one inch staples. Man, that's painful. Oh, that uh, is no joke. Hence the uh, the photo. <laughs> yeah, I. What I, I can never understand. Once again, as we're going from the story of of the dude injecting stuff into his penis, why would you ever? It just I cannot fathom. If you tear your nutsack open, one, <clears throat> your testicles can unravel, hmm. which is yeah, they're like wrapped up intestines, so they can just like you know the old like cartoon the inside of a golf ball it's a pleasant just just that's like the sound effect of it just like the red carpet you know the the no no it's the 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 window uh the window shade the blind or yeah, shade the blind. Yeah. <laughs> thank you anyways uh so why would you have an injury like that i know i got a soap box around here somewhere let me find it for you yeah. jason <laughs> 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 You fill me with such rage, Ethan. I, <laughs> honest to God, don't know if I'm going to go home and hurt myself. Um, <clears throat> I just don't understand. Like, how could you... The pain has got to be unbearable. How can you just... I mean, that's just a, a nice, quick, re, you know, a reaction to what you got to do, you know, to, so you don't have uh, unravelings of no, your scrotum out if, on the if, floor. If I tore my scrotum open... What would you there's, do? There's two... I hold three fingers up as I say two. There's two things that could happen. There is either I lay on the floor, and even if I'm like face down, I will not move my face, and I'll just be like, help, help me, help. Either that, if I have to move, it's going to be a minimum of 10 feet to end my life. So it's just going to be like to some high-powered light socket. I don't know if you've got some 480 volt that I can just, you know, plug into and, and die. Uh, or if somebody has, you know, some kind of bandsaw laying around that I can just end it real quick with. 
But I, <laughs> if I can't be assisted moving after that point, there is nothing I can do for myself. I'm just going to die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree. Well, instead, it all. instead, this individual here. Um, Our friendship is going through the flames right now. <laughs> I, I look at your face and where I used to find joy, I only find disgust. Sadness. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, this uh, patient came through, but he only salvaged one testicle. Well, good. Ooh, That's yeah. your punishment for deciding to stamp your own <laughs> testicles. I'm assuming he got infected after three days. Well, yeah. Some rusty well, staples. Well, I think that's what happened. Is in, in, the, in the story here, he had some antibiotics, uh, some medical baths, uh, and surgery. Eight rusty staples <laughs> were retrieved, and he was pretty much patched back to normal. Black one testicle, other one unraveled, and story was over. Say one black testicle. <laughs> Seven kids and one testicle. Son. All right, black. so Ethan, please, in the name of all that is good, take me away from this right. freaking story. <laughs> Man cements microwave to head in Wolverhampton. <laughs> Which is the name of where this I thing takes place. I thought you said man submits microwave head. <laughs> Cements. Oh Cements. Oh Cements. Submits microwave head. Anyways, either one of these I'm excited An internet to prankster had to be freed by firefighters after cementing his head inside a microwave oven. That's hilarious. West Easy Midlands Fire Service said it took an hour to free the man after they were called to a house in Ford Houses, Wolverhampton, which is in England. Mm -hmm. You'd think it'd be in Florida. Uh, <laughs> friends had They don't have cool names like that. Yeah, they don't. But if they... it was like Methtropolis, that would be Florida. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> Austin. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, friends had managed to feed an air tube into the 22-year-old's mouth to help mm. him breathe, the service said. And also swift delivery of applesauce. <laughs> Watch Commander Sean Dakin said the man could quite easily have suffocated or have been easily injured. No joke. Mr. Dakin said Sounds he and a group me. of friends had mixed seven bags of polyphila, mm. which they then poured around his head, which was protected by a plastic bag inside the microwave. Mm. The oven was being used as a mold and wasn't plugged in. The mixture quickly set hard, and by the time we were called, they'd already been trying to free him for about an hour and a half. Crews from the technical rescue team helped with taking the microwave apart, he added. It took us nearly an hour to free him, added Mr. Dakin. All of the group all of the group were in, involved were very apologetic, but this was clearly a call out which might have prevented us from helping someone else in genuine accidental need. I mean, this is somebody in genuine accidental need. I mean, I don't think you've got to worry about But I doubt about uh, is Wolverhampton there... is too busy okay. by the sound of that name. <laughs> Wolverhampton, there is, if there is crimes, it's strictly werewolf related. All right, we're going to go ahead and get into our first beer here. This one is from New Belgium Brewing Company. Uh, the beer itself is Abbey Belgium Style Double, which Ethan was doing some digging to find out some sites so we can get some re research, you know, so we can tell you a little bit about it. And, of course, it's not up online. It looks like it is yep. so currently down for maintenance. Their site says, please wait a moment. We'll be back shortly. Sure. So I guess it's down for maintenance. Yeah, so, I mean, you all know doing? New Belgium. They make fat tire. It, it's a good which beer. Is, which is quite good. So this one, uh, like I said, it is Abbey Belgium style double. So uh, let's go ahead and get It is that going to be strong. Anything is, double, triple, quadruple? Is it an ale or what is it? What's is, that? Is it an ale? This, no, this it's... Beer? Uh, or is it a... Uh, Belgium style. It's D-U-B-B-E-L. <laughs> tells me so much. Well, it's like That's double bonk, you know what I mean? How yeah. they know you that. lost sockless. I will be fighting you. You just keep stepping, man. I'm working my way towards nude. So do uh, I have to sounds like wear a sword clothes fight to me. as well? Or? A you do whatever you fight. want. I'll be comfortable and free. What is that? It's got a... What is, what is that I don't know. <laughs> it's something... It's odd. I'm trying to figure out what that is. Yeah, here you guys, you guys give it a go. Look it's, at the beer jeans. It's, it's very good. I do, I <laughs> enjoy. I do enjoy it quite Far a bit. From actually, genius. that is the one thing that I've. Mm. We were out and about, and the, the, probably like the coolest thing about this podcast was we were out and about, and uh, um, they had some bottled beers and up, and they had it on draft, but they had the bottles there, basically advertising what they had on draft, which sure. was kind of cool. And Dinah was asking 
like which ones like you know do you know any ideas which one are good which one she should get and i actually was able to give yeah. input on what that's was cool. amazing and you, <laughs> what is wrong with you people i'm trying to be genuinely nice he is he's pouring my on. soul out on I the apologize. table I apologize. And you rape it. when you come in here when you come in here and i have a cleveland steamer dropped on this table <laughs> mississippi mud bend over you will know you will know your crimes no i was it was really cool i was I, like, what would you recommend to her uh she didn't actually end up getting anything but what would you um, recommend I God, I don't remember. I don't remember how I got I mean, was, here. I mean, You're well, asking I, what I recommended a week ago. Well, I mean, uh, what kind of style of beer? I, I guess narrow it down to that. That's pretty. There was beer. You still don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, without embarrassment, let's just say it was a uh, a light lighter beer. Maybe. No, no. She, a PA. Diana likes stout. She likes Guinness. She, does. she I'd, likes. I'd be oh, okay. She likes. She gets real sassy. You saying and, she like, likes ready to dark? fight. Is that what you're saying? She likes to fight with knives, is what she oh. likes. And you're going to have to face her after that comment. <laughs> I'm going to make sure she hears it. She comes at you. I'm the editor, so you go <laughs> yeah, right ahead yes. and tell her it's in you there. Know, you She's know. going back to her roots. <laughs> she, she, she is. She came out of the uterus with a switchblade, so don't don't play. That's good. That's good. That's, That's good. That's funny. Yeah, no, it was, just, it was really cool because I'm not a beer person ever. Like, never in my life have I been a beer person. So it was really cool to be able to say, like, um, we were at a place um, in uh, J Town. They got this. It's literally mac and cheese based. Mm-hmm. Like that's what they're like popular for. Is they do these like crazy mac and cheese things. And uh, um, I was there with my buddy Kale, and he was going through some beers because they have like a ton of drafts. And he was like mm-hmm. naming them off, and I was able to be like, nope, nope, this is what this is, this is what this is, this awesome. is what the, you won't like. This. And I was just like, it was blew my mind because it was like before I was just like. I don't know. That one's got a know. cool that picture of a jackalope on it. Let's get that, you know. And like, I actually know what's going on. So it's it's, it's actually you know been pretty awesome. fun. And I owe that all to Jared and none of the rest of you guys. Y'all worse. Well, we we're glad you had progressed to uh, to that to that status so that you could promote some of those things. And she likes porter beers. She likes yeah. Dark she beers. does. She likes she likes awesome. uh, you know awesome. heavier dark beers. And which is which is crazy because you know she's also not like a huge beer drinker, but if mm-hmm. she does, uh, she goes for like uh, we went to um, the Holy Grail down in mm-hmm. Ooh, Road. I love that place. And awesome, and it was it. got the nitro milk stout that they got oh, on that's, draft. That's oh, delicious. That's and it was it was incredible. Of course, yeah. I think I got Pilsner there because you can't go wrong with. Pilsner's usually always. But I think you yeah. liked the milk stout, didn't you? The oh, le- I love the milk stout. milk stout. I ended up actually, actually finishing right it. Right hand's a little strong, but left hand and <laughs> a little more jerking on it. <laughs> a little jerky. I call the it's left hand like the stranger. Um, it's like it's somebody else doing it. <laughs> well, you got to sit on it for like 30 minutes for it to go numb first, and then <laughs> you sneak it up. Oh my gosh, that's actually that is fantastic. I actually oh, that is, is a good beer. I, like that, that that would be like in all honesty, that would be a, a great beer for, um, like even winter. You know, yes. it's a great winter yeah. beer. It'd be yes. even a great summer beer. It's refreshing and it's also got like a thick heaviness to it. And it's it's an anytime beer. There, that's good. Well, I forget what that 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 kind of mid range flavor it has. It's not an ale. And it's, it's just it's, Belgian it's, style. I think order. is what it is. It could be. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it's. I mean, I. I think it take can my go word with, with a grain of salt. It can but go I'm with pretty food. sure that's like there's lager, there's ale, and like Belgian style is just what it is. It's just what it's classified as. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I can't figure. I mean, because it, it ends, it ends hoppy. That the hoppiness is on the back end. It's not very, a whole lot though. It's, it's very smooth. Yeah, it's very smooth it, yeah. at the beginning. But there is. This, I don't know if it's. I don't see. I, I don't really know the words enough to be like maltiness, but there is. It's, it's kind of a That's smoky. Kind of, yeah, smoky uh, is. Yeah. yeah, but it's 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 very it's very good. good. I, it t- it tastes like the hops. It tastes spicy. Yeah, it is. It's spicy. Yeah. It's, like spicy it's, and it's smoky. almost yeah. like t- like you're saying toward the middle, and then right on the end, you get a lot of it. So I'm guessing because it's a double, you get more of that spicy mm-hmm. flavor. If it was just a Belgian style, you wouldn't get a strong taste as yeah. you are. It's a little yeah. heavier. They have the other. Belgian quads. Wow, and those are intense. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, th- I would love to try that. I would like to get that on draft to see, you know, mm-hmm. what that would. And it's a little like different on draft. Than yeah, it's, in the it's always always different. Is um, mm-hmm. Dad, you picked this up. Is this a new one they have? Um, so I, I've never seen this well, one. Before. Honestly, I you don't should know. Should be able to look up online, but there's. <laughs> Well, well, if their site, honestly, if their so, site was gone, <laughs> like it's know? possible right now. Oh, yeah, I know. Unfortunately, <laughs> coming but, from from the only thing I've known of that company in particular was Fat Tire, and the labeling on that it looks I would have never recognized. I would have never thought that was the same company. <laughs> that's exactly why I, I asked yeah. if this was a brand new because the only way you can tell is, is, bike, is a little yeah. bit at the top at the bike. The bike is the <laughs> brand. So. <laughs> Um, uh, but New Belgium, I know uh, beers that are really great is at the ones um, called Citradelic, and then we mentioned Fat Tire. Oh, was that really was good. Citradelic? New Belgium? Yeah, Citradelic oh, okay. is On one of those level. few. <clears throat> Citradelic is one of those few that I would recommend yeah, as far as IPAs to try. That's really um, good. because it has a strong sweet flavor. It's the caramel mm. malts, so you get that big citrus flavor, and it's really sweet. So that's more the West Coast, right? Oh, it's straight up West Coast style. Yeah, the East Coast is like well, dirt. Citradelic. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think that's, that's the that's, that's one of the, the one. Like, I think the, oh, I, I think the last show that did we, you like that? Yeah, the last show my band did. Um, we were playing at uh, the Cobra in Nashville, and I, I stopped and got yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, it ended up like, and I did, and I, and I stopped and I and I saw it, and I saw that it was an IPA, and I thought of you guys, and I was like, you know what, I'll just I'll give it a go. <laughs> Screw the mother guys. Yeah. I'm, but no, it. But it said, you know, I'm like IPAs. <laughs> give me that six Give me that six there. <laughs> Well, because no. I love them so much. <laughs> I just figured I'd give it a go because right. it was it was one of the few times like Nashville is notorious and it's it's terrible <laughs> for the music scene because they they don't pay you. You pay them to play there unless you make money coming out the door. They can't even be like cool about it and be like hey you know what here's a here's a free drink on us you know yeah. you're a band playing we're grateful for you yeah. to be in here and we'll you're, give you a free you're drink. pulling in people here just have a free beer one free beer on us it's not like uh, that. the east room does it which is like incredible and i love playing the east room that's in nashville yeah that's in nashville i'm gonna look that up next time um, i'm down there yeah east room is uh, is a fantastic venue um okay but like so so i, I stopped and i got an ipa and, and, and it ended up being <laughs> What are you guys? It was just so. It was, it was so what, have I, what have I done? It was just so. It was just. It was just so like. I was just like, okay, I'll have to look that up. Like, no, I don't give a crap. Yeah, I no. really don't care. No, I, 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 I wasn't doing anything. I know. I and I, I apologize. I, I, Go ahead. I, I was just the nearest was person to you. I, 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 I mauled Ethan just now because I was so filled with rage. I was, and Tim's too far away. I was <laughs> so turned on weird. afterwards, too. <laughs> it makes you feel any better. I'm sweating in this chair. Just, it's, it's hotter than balls in here. Hot. You're wearing a sweater. I'm not wearing anything. So, Gonads are sweating right now. Yeah. Go ahead. So let's. I guess let's go ahead and get to our next story here. I just, I, you know, I've tried to be like nice, open, honest with you guys, and all you guys have been. It's appreciated. Just, just the worst trash. people. And I've really con- uh, reconsidered our friendship. Anyways, <laughs> this next story is from edition.cnn.com, and the headline reads. <laughs> I don't know if anybody can hear heard that car horn that just went off on my phone. Jared danced perfectly in sync with it without knowing it was going to go off. So he missed the car altogether. That was incredible. He did two little dance, little jigs, perfectly with the honks. All right. The headline reads: Ghost ships wash up in Japan with skeletons on board. Wow, I really want to hear about this. Tokyo. At least four ships. That sounds genuine. <laughs> no, it was genuine. That's the most interesting thing I've heard since we've been on this podcast. Yeah, like, oh. Ghost ships, man. That's what I'm talking about. I have, well, to, I have to concur. At least, dump on me. Yeah, at least four ships have washed up on Japan's west coast this mm-hmm. month. Some with bodies on board. And while authorities have, haven't have confirmed their origin, signs suggest they are from North Korea. Mm. Eight skeletons were found in the hold of one wooden boat that washed ashore in Miyazawa Beach in the northwest Japan's main island, Honshu, the Akita Coast Guard said on Monday. And Wooden boat? Is that what they said? Like, yeah, skeletons was, yeah, in yeah, a wooden yeah, boat? In a wooden boat. Oh, wow. Mm. The, identif- the unidentified boat was spotted drifting offshore on Friday, 
but the grim discovery was only made when it reached land, which I mean, makes sense. Well, officials <laughs> would not, as they sit there with the boat just off in the distance, they're like, there's some dang skeletons on that boat, isn't there, Timothy? <laughs> the dang skeletons are coming <laughs> aboard. <laughs> Grab your what is it? What is it called? That's not scabbard. Whatever, pirates. <laughs> BS. While officials would not confirm the boat was from North Korea, it matches the spate of vessels and debris that have ended up on Japan's west coast. Mm. Satoru Miyamoto, Miyamoto, a professor at oh my god, I would I, turning into me. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I look over at you, so I'm just like, help me, but you know this pain all too well. Does this have a woo in it? No. <laughs> Sikakuin University, an expert of North Korea, said the number of ships washing ashore on Japan's coast has risen since 2013. It's after Kim Jong-un decided to expand the f- fisheries industry as a way of increasing res- revenue for the military. They are using old boats manned by the military by people who have no knowledge about fishing. F- f- fishing. <laughs> Fishing. Fishing. <laughs> Miyamoto said. I know you could teach him a thing or two. And it will continue. Man, have you seen my hand? It's like a grapefruit. You're right up in there. Japanese officials gather on November 27, 2017, near a boat wash sword in Oga, Akita per- Prefecture. Authorities found eight bodies in an unidentified wooden boat. Mm. So it looks like a job for Scoob and the gang. There's some really fun stuff happening over in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good time. When is there not fun stuff no, the happening over in Japan? Well, dead when people we dropped and boats. two yeah. atom bombs on Japan, that was when two. That was when some fun stuff was well, not happening know. in Japan. <laughs> we are terrible people. <laughs> and now a moment of silence. <laughs> <laughs> really? So go ahead, Jared. Take us away with the next story before we all. Before I literally <laughs> kill myself. Oh, I'm about there. I'm about, I'm about there. I am there. Baloney! Woman fined at U.S.-Mexico border for 227 pounds of contraband sausage. <laughs> sausage. That's a lot of sausage. Sausage. <laughs> sausage. A woman in El Paso was fined Wednesday for trying to sneak 227 pounds of contraband baloney into the United States, or as other uneducated hillbillies would say, Bologna. <laughs> Talk about the worst day ever. Oh, that's so cute. W-U-R-S-T. Customs and Border Patrol officials say the woman approached the Paso del Norte border crossing around 7 a.m. Wednesday and said she had no fruits, vegetables, meat, or other contraband. But, she said during a second search, there was the Sal Chicha? I feel like this is the only time you get contraband and bologna in the or same s- sense. sausage. Hey, you have a wife that's Hispanic? S-A-L-C- <laughs> C- you must know all about smuggling and contraband. <laughs> you went trafficking now let me all tell you, bit. <laughs> I can sneak just about anything into a movie theater. So, okay. As long as you don't mind your soda or goods covered in feces, I can get it in. <laughs> I'm young. My sphincter is tight. So, you're not loose butthole. Um, S A L C H I C H A. I'm. S- prison, prison. I Nine think. Prison. Uh, mm. I think. Uh, salchicha or sausage. I could help you, but I'm liking watching you drown. <laughs> Please, I'm treading water for three or four minutes now. And I no, you're help. drowning. Die. I need help. Die, Jared. <laughs> anyway. Bologna or Bologna is, is considered. It, is con- it I E or E I? Tell me what. <laughs> I before E, except after C. <laughs> Bologna or Bologna, Bologna is considered prefer. contraband due to the possibility of spreading foreign animal diseases to the U.S. pork industry, and officials found 23 rolls of Mexican Bologna or Bologna under the floor mats of the woman's car. The contraband racked up to a $1,000 fine and could have netted more than 1,800 cold-cut sandwiches. Earlier this year, CPB officials in New Mexico gave another $1,000 fine to a driver for trying to smuggle 30 rolls of Mexican bologna, or bologna, into the country. Hmm. What's the difference between Mexican bologna and uh American bologna. Mexican bologna has arsenic in it, I'm pretty sure. I prefer the arsenic. Or the, 
boy just says, you know what? It's got a kick, but it tastes pretty good. It's got a you kick, how, baby. You know how in like uh, pound turkeys or ham where they, you know, they have the water and sealed with it inside. So I'm guessing that the Mexican bologna will uh, be careful. <laughs> Just like, choose your next words wisely. Yes. I, I am forced to report everything you say to Diana. <laughs> I'm saying their water is crap. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's true. Well, okay, yeah. then. We'll go with that. that, then, that, is, that is and true. I'm sure if you went back well, to Diana, and and Diana would assumption. be like, yeah, I'd rather have a beer. Like, no, she, she, yeah, she's been over there. She always tells me, she's like, yeah, if you ever go over there. She went over there a few times when she was in her teens. And she's like, if you go over there, don't drink the water. Drink the water. Right, and I never have of all the times I've been to Mexico. Have you been to Mexico? I've been to Mexico more than once. I have never been there. Don't drink but, the water. Wow. Drink the urine. I have, wow. I have no desire. I've been to I think you've been to Mexico Germany, Austria. Korea, <laughs> Korea, Italy, but yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, they got bad water over there. Next story, <laughs> Ethan, what you got? Okay, uh, man who entered strangers' party naked and drunk after sniffing glue, sentenced to prison. Yes. Yeah, boy, if a story he, isn't more appropriate, What's Portland, it? Oregon. Unfortunately, it's not Dream Florida. Of the 90s, Another man. Oregon story. <laughs> a man who showed up at a party naked and groped a woman has been sentenced to more than four years in prison. Wow. Robert Roy Inglesman was sentenced Thursday in, oh my lord, Multnomah doing, County Circuit Court. Was he doing push-ups in the middle of the street? No, he wasn't. <laughs> no. Well, he probably did later. That was his brother. The Oregonian slash Oregon Live reported that he told the judge he was he wasn't acting normally the night of June twenty fifth because he was drunk and had sniffed glue. The forty three forty three year old man it's said nice he recipe. thought he heard his ex girlfriend's voice inside the house. Holy crap. Authorities say Inglesman came into the house visibly aroused. Lifted up a woman. Visi- Wait a minute. Visibly aroused. Visibly aroused. Uh, 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 you know, kind of mm-hmm. expound on that a little bit. Was that, he sporting a circus? I don't need to. I'm going to be honest. He wasn't even listening to the story. He was talking with Jared about how he finished the entire he bottle like, of old granddad. He was like, erections? Where are we at now? Right. Are we at? I'm not okay. saying that. I'm just saying. You know, Inglesman was visibly aroused. <laughs> Lifted up a woman's skirt and pressed himself against her. He pleaded no contest to first-degree burglary and attempted first-degree sexual abuse. Well, he's going to have his skirt lifted up and things pressed against him in prison. So enjoy, my friend. Multnomah County Circuit Judge Gregory Silver. You ever delivered for Amazon? (laughs) So the Circuit Judge Gregory Silver noted that Inglesman had a history of drug abuse and said he needs to take... To make changes in his life. Oh man, he's gonna have like changes you made. don't <laughs> say. It's gonna be given to him, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> changes are gonna be given. Oh, <laughs> All twelve inches of it. <laughs> so there you have it. Yeah, I just... don't sniff. No, don't sniff glue and press yourself against strange. Wait, wait, was it? <laughs> I have. I have never. Okay, so have you ever? No. Did you? <laughs> have you ever sniffed no. markers? Expo markers, like the dry erase Ex- markers. Expo markers, I have or, nice. or the scented markers oh, that like are supposed to smell I like. Have. I have. have um, I have smelled them, but I wouldn't say like sit there and like taking a good huff off. Of have one. you ever? Have you ever taken the like literally the 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 sharpie or the permanent markers that are like the size of one of those mag flashlights? Oh, yeah, the <laughs> huge ones. Yeah. Have you ever smelled one of those? Yes. Yeah. Uh, not intentionally, no. <laughs> I accidentally took the cap off and put it next to my nose and took it accidentally. Yeah, I know what they smell like, sure. but are you asking have I huffed them intentionally? Well, no, like not huffed to get high, but just like opened it and like. Yeah, okay, yeah. You're I'll hitting his tickle smell. button. Okay. <laughs> no, it, don't seems, hit that it no seems like I'm hitting his offended button right now. <laughs> You know, I pressed. My, I just, I just put a mark. He just wrote on hook. his face the permanent just, mark. You know, speaking of being offended, I was passed <laughs> over on a on a story here uh, from Jared to Ethan. I'm I'm offended, but I'm not going to make it an issue. Does a smoker? <laughs> you, you offended? That'd be new. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> I don't think either one of us have a soul, Tim. So I think we're we're pretty much set. All right, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, saying, Tim. Tim, oh, read it out loud. Okay, the man who died from having his manhood bitten off by rats. <laughs> no, that man. is awesome. The wait, Charlie wait, wait, Sheen who's, story. Who's <laughs> winning? Tiger blood. 
Who's wait, wait, wait? Who's the guy that controls rats? It's Will Will, Will oh, Willard. 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 That's what yes. it is. That Willard. Was the movie. Great yes. movie. I, I, it's that's a little goofy. A little far. Yeah, it's a little know, goofy. I don't say it was great. It was that guy who. What did he play that character in Charlie's Angels where he'd rip out people's hair going. <laughs> <laughs> he at the top of his lungs. A little fetish hair going on. Yeah, that was his jam. Oh, gosh. Okay, this story reads When you check into a hospital, you expect to get healthier, right? No. Poor. No, I usually Aaron expect to get staff infected. Shanaka was seeking treatment for pneumonia in a hospital in uh, Kolrata, New Delhi, India, and had a penis chewed off by his. Uh, by his rats instead, according to uh, press reports, city? <laughs> I don't know. This like slowly Let me fold my hands, so I look more like the pot. Uh, family members arrived at the hospital for a visit in tw- December 2011, in the bowl, in the bowl, and found him in a pool of blood, and a medical staff in sight. A member of Sadaka's, not to be confused with Neil Sadaka. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, actually, when he first read his name. That's the I first know thing you were. That's why I said that. So the, told the press there was no, no nurse <laughs> at the scene, no. and he was writing in pain. His penis had been nipped, nibbled. I'm sorry, nibbled. I mean, he expound on that phrase, nibbled <laughs> by his rats. His rats? I don't know why he was rats. His rats, but uh, they were by rats. So if all it takes is a nibble, was it a tic tac? Uh, I'm not sure. He's in the hospital. I'll so I'm fresh in your brain. <laughs> Good the relative Lord. also said that the hospital staff admitted Little to nibble the and it's presence gone. of his rats in the hospital. Wow. Does I hate it, to see what the hospital Yelp reviews. Does it say Yelp how? Reviews. Yeah, Yelp reviews. It was for okay. A uh, my penis got eaten <laughs> by rats. Does it say how many rats he owned? Uh, the rats say on Yelp it was uh, very delicious. It was very delicious. Four Rat five reviews stars, are the most reliable. <laughs> well, that's good enough for me. Let's go down to New Delhi. Let's go down to New Let's Delhi. Not. I don't want anything to do with it. <sighs> that's like <actually, laughs> that's that's pretty rough. Like I can't even 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 think of because I'm. All I can think of is I'm putting myself in his shoes. Despite all my rage, I'm still just a rat in a cage. Da, da, da. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, I, I, that's also low hanging fruit. You all in the low hanging fruit today. I don't understand it. So we're gonna get into our last beer of the evening. This one is from Bell's, which is in Comstock, Michigan. It is Expedition Stout, Russian Imperial Stout. It reads, the Russian Imperial Stout thirsts for travel. A huge malt body is matched with a blend of complex chocolate, dark fruit, and roasted aromas. This beer is ready to be enjoyed now or sit perfectly content in your cellar until the next journey. If you're pregnant, don't drink this. Oh, you don't say. Crap. So help me. The sass that you throw at me every day. Be thankful we're not doing the drinking game. We already drank everything that was to be drunk. Already drank what's drunk. Drank what's drunk. So tell us a little bit about Bell's. It started by uh, a guy named Larry Bell uh, in the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, I guess he was in actually in the bakery business and then started getting uh, interested Seriously. in yeast and fermentation mm-hmm. and uh, made his own home brew out of a 15-gallon soup pot. What? And then uh, that was that's, how, that's what made his first commercial sell, I guess, his hmm. first commercial beer. And uh, I guess it just went from there. It was a good. Apparently, he yeah, did a good job of it. It's, that, that it's a little too much for me. The flavor is just man. Is that one of his first? I mean, he he made more than just the Russian stout. Oh yeah, no, that was just more on the general history of his right, beers. Yeah, right. not on That's the Russian gather, stout. Yes. Yeah, one of the earliest examples of Russian imperial stouts mm-hmm. in the United States. The Expedition Stout offers immensely complex flavors crafted specifically with aging in mind. A huge malt body is matched with a heady, that's what's how, that's how it is, H-E-A-D-Y, a heady mm. blend of chocolate, dark fruit, and other aromas. The flavors will slowly meld and grow in depth as the beer ages in your cellar. Yeah, it's 10.5% uh, alcohol. Of it's, all it's, all, it's only for the extreme uh, stout uh, palates because it's it, it, it pretty dark. Yeah, I mean, I taste... I taste it, and it's very prominent. Is dark chocolate? Oh yeah. Yes. I taste extreme. Like it, it's almost like you ever go to like Kroger and get the uh, the like ninety nine point nine percent like dark chocolate, right? The, like yeah, natural oh, dark of chocolate, of course. Right. Yeah, the real bitter. It, it's I bitter. taste yeah. that. Yeah, it definitely in it. It's not bad. It's just it's 
Like just it's like strong. That, that dark chocolate. This is real yeah. strong. And when you think when you it. think of bitter, it's not like it has a terrible aftertaste where it's it's no. it's extreme bitter like you can with ha- with um, some beers that have a lot of hops in there and like that. But it's just a taste of if you really like dark chocolate. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is this will be your thing. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Laughs and Drafts. We thank you guys so much for joining along with us and being degenerates because we're all just terrible people waiting to die. And as always, as I say at the end of every episode, you can find our show on iTunes. You can find it on Podbean. So go ahead, hop on iTunes, subscribe, leave a comment, rate. We really appreciate it. If you're one of the first 100 people, you will get a free sticker. Tell tell me about how much you hate Ethan. Have you seen that guy? <laughs> Have you seen him? I hate him. You can get a free sticker just by telling me that. And then you can uh, also find us on Facebook at Laughs and Drafts. You can also find us on Twitter at Laughs Drafts. And on Patreon.com slash Laughs and Drafts. You can uh, feel free to donate to us. Anything uh, helps further the podcast and helps keep us going. Yeah, it helps, it helps keep me from murdering everyone at this table. Also, if you do make a donation, get some cool stuff like a signed card from us all the way to reading a show or uh, reading on one of the shows, one of your favorite weird news stories with us on air, which is going to be a lot of fun. We love having people participate participate uh we appreciate you guys always sticking along with us uh once again i am jason thomas your resident fancy boy i'm ethan the guy with the glasses <laughs> thank you ethan this is tim the old man and this is jared you're learning man i learned i learned like my tolerance for terrible things in this world it just continues i think i hit a brink today where I was like, I had to decide while we're doing the podcast, is this something that I really want to do? Because I don't know if my brain can take this. (laughs) 